Guess what? Jesse Lee Ward allegedly kidnapped her team, <laughs> her direct downline, like 16 people, did some real cult leader stuff. Not Cambodia. I keep I keep wanting to say Cambodia. Colombia. Yo soy es gringa. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Chelsea. You most likely already know that. A lot of y'all have been messaging me, commenting, and just being like, when are you going to talk about it? I knew, I thought, that she was going to release a secondary video, which she has, kind of like going back on her own words. And it was hilarious. And then also Dr. Stephen Hassan, the cult expert, if you will, he's the leading cult expert in the US. He's amazing. Has written four books on cults. He made a statement about this as well. And then it was also written about by a pretty well-known publication, I think. I can't remember which one it was. Either way, we're going to go over all of that. And that's why I wanted to wait. So as I said on my Instagram story yesterday, if you're not following me, I am CC Suarez across all social media. That includes everything. Y'all know when I'm reacting to any type of content like this, really, I mean, it could be Instagram stories too. I don't like to cut anything out because I personally know that I don't want to be taken out of context. And so therefore I'm going to give these people, even though most of them suck, I'm going to give them that same respect, right? Even though they usually don't give me that. Either way, I don't want to be taken out of context. So the thing is, is that this is so long and it's going to take me really Ethan. <laughs> and we love Ethan. It would take him way too long to be able, like it would just be ridiculous. And it would be such a long video if we watched an over two over hour long live streams and then also like went over and broke everything down because it's a lot. So I have this cut down to the part where she talked about the cam, not cam, Cambodia, my God, and the Columbia trip. And then for the rest of it, she doesn't really talk about it. And then I'll put in where she, her like response to it. And that'll be kind of cut up as well, just so it's easier for Ethan. But if y'all want to watch these, DC has them on her channel. I'll put like a Google link for them in my description box so that you can like see the full content if I can find that as well. Jesse Lee Ward did delete this. The first one where she's talking about the Columbia trip, which is hilarious because she's like never someone who deletes stuff like that, you know? She sticks by her craziness and it's absolutely hilarious. On January 22nd, 2023, she was talking about, and I have basically my all my notes, but she was talking about how she's banned from IG for over a month. So she had to create like, a dog Instagram so that she like for her two dogs so that she could go live on Instagram still. And then she was also talking how she had a dog sidekick come and rub crystals on her dogs or something. She also talked about how she's so tan and then how the products put you in instant ketosis. She is tan. However, she's not, it's not instant ketosis and that's complete. That's been debunked so many times and it's hilarious that she talks about that and promotes those products. Allegedly, it is of my opinion, just by like the look of her and how she lost weight so fast, it's that she's on Ozempic. I'm pretty positive that she is. She has Ozempic face. If you don't know what Ozempic is, just look it up. Ozempic for weight loss. It's a diabetes medication that a lot of famous people and rich people are taking. I know a lot of people in South Tampa that are on it. I even talked to my doctor about it just so I could get like, not so I could get it, but so that like we could, I could get more information like about it so that I could talk about it in videos. Due to like her face, like she has Ozempic face, you know, which is where you like look more gaunt and like kind of look sick. Like if you look at, if you look at pictures of Kim Kardashian right now, she's kind of got like Ozempic face and like the like skinniness of like Ozempic. Allegedly, a lot of people say that that is what her and Chloe have been doing. And then they've just been working out a bunch as well to like maintain it because a lot of times if you stop taking it, you'll just gain all the way back. Anyways, that's all alleged. I don't know that to be fact, but she was saying that she was demonetized and banned. So that's why she made a dog page. And then she said that she was banned because haters reported her content because then in an Instagram story, she said that she was shredding or like killing people's calves. Could have been someone reporting her, but it might not have been. Could have just been Instagram like flagging it. Like for instance, I sometimes will say like the jokingly say the phrase, like I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. And Instagram has flagged that multiple times. Like if you look at my community, like guideline violations, it's two Instagram stories that say that, which is annoying, but it's fine. She also claimed that MLM haters DM'd her mom and told her mom that she is a scammer. And now Jessie Lee like can't pay off her mom's debts because her mom won't give her the information that she needed to do so. Please don't do that. Listen, I don't like this person. I don't hate them. I wish the best for them. And I wish that they would not be a cult leader. But I know it's kind of weird to say like, don't take it real world because you want to be able to help people. But contacting her mom and like her, contacting her family is a, it's a little bit too much. 
Okay, so please don't take things real world. Please don't do that. Like that could be seen as harassment. So please don't do that. It's it, again, it's just like, I don't want people to contact my family. And plus like her mom isn't on the internet, right? That's a private person. Don't do that. Please don't do that. If you have the like, that you feel like you need to do that, throw your phone out the window. I mean, also if you're on the first floor and it's like in your backyard, cause you don't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> but just please, please don't do that. Take a, take a break from the internet if you think that you're gonna be helpful by contacting a scammer's family and like telling them that they're a scammer. It just gave me the ick. Jesse Lee isn't a very reliable narrator and that's kind of one of the main points that I wanna hit on today. It seems like she will always twist stories to make herself look better. And then to a lot of times like make herself kind of seem like the victim when she's absolutely not. And anyone can be a victim. Anyone can be a survivor, no matter how powerful, how much money you have, how successful you are, it doesn't matter. But it's like clear that in like these situations, it's like, no, what are you talking about? I'm like, she will say that people are like making up stuff about her. And then it's like, no, Jesse Lee, you said, you said that information. Let's go ahead and start. On the Columbia trip. So I'm not gonna use any names or anything, but I warned people. I warned them. I said, look, you have 90 days. No, I do not eat keto. You have 90 days to get in shape and you need to get in shape, okay? Because if you're going to go on a trip with me, we are going to move our freaking bodies, okay? Like I'm sick of people, like like excellence is awesome in physical form, period, okay? Period. I can tell how you feel about yourself because your, your, your physical state is a manifestation of what's happening on the inside, right? And so I'm not a doctor, Kathy, sorry, I can't answer that. Um, so at any rate, I warned them. I said, you should probably be in the gym uh, every single day for the 90 days leading up to it. I would cut your diet into high protein, uh, moderate, car moderate, complex carbohydrates and drop some fat. And some people did not listen to me. Like I gave them fair warning. I think they thought that it was just going to be vacation. And so the first day we were chilling in our flipping 12 bedroom villa. We went all around the Columbia city. We did the most, like it was freaking beautiful. Day two, I tricked them even more. I got like a whole live about this. Um, uh, tricked them even more, to be totally honest. I rented a boat for the day. So we had this crazy boat day. We were out on the water. We went on some private islands. We went snorkeling, these gorgeous fish. Oh my gosh. Uh, we had great food on the boat, dance parties, like your typical, I'm, you know, in South America day, you know, like the delicious food, the coconut water with the for shaped with coconuts, like like all this stuff, you know? And Sasha and I, me and Mateo, were just laughing the whole time. And by the way, I was training every day. So masterminding, masterminding, masterminding. And um, and so they were, and I, I mean, I set them up, I had them set up for success. Don't you worry about it, okay? Like all kinds of coaching and stuff of that nature. It was really powerful trainings. Some of my best trainings ever, I would say. Uh, but anyway, so we went to, and so right before I went to bed that night, I said, by the way, I would prioritize sleep tonight. Thank you for your order. I saw it just go through, by the way. Yes, you can still order a link is in the bio. You can use, use code 15 off for 15% off, okay? So I warned them. I said, I would prioritize some sleep tonight because they didn't know. We said, we're going to go, you know, we're going to go on a little, we're going to go on a hike tomorrow, you know, prepare for like two hours. And look, I knew it wasn't two hours, okay? Um, Christine, about to buy your first pack. What do you recommend? I'd do a clearance bundle. Please add the Mitoplex. Do the clearance bundle and caffeine or caffeine free and then... Um, and then please at the Mitoplex. So what can I say? I mean, I told him, I said, just be prepared. You bring as much water as you think you need for, for just, you know, bring enough water for a full day. Um, you know, you might get cold. So I bring a, a cold weather outfit. You might go swimming. It's up to you. I do ship to the Netherlands. Yes. Please add international shipping. Um, I said, look, you know, just prepare yourself. If you're somebody who needs some snacks, take some snacks. If you're somebody who gets hot easily, you know, bring your bug spray. If you, you're prone to bugs. Um, and, and the smart thing to do would be ask leading questions, you know? So one person was really- The smart thing to do would be to not lie to your team, especially when you're someone who says that they have to do, like they have to be coachable and do everything that you say. So they should just blindly trust you. But you specifically misled them because you told them prepare for a two hour hike. And then she said, I knew it wasn't a two hour hike. And then you're getting frustrated with them because they're not asking leading questions. But if they're supposed to blindly follow you and you've said multiple times, it's a two hour hike, it's a two hour hike. She had said like, I had told them to prepare. I told them to be in the gym and to like cut their diet and stuff. First of all, did you tell them that they were gonna go on a two hour hike or did you tell them they're gonna go on apparently a 15 hour hike? which is what she says later. And then plot twist, it's even more than that. Because if you were gonna tell me, hey, 
you got to be in the gym before this. We're going to be really active. Then I would be like, okay, I need to go lift weights. Because when someone says, do you want to go to the gym? I'm not doing cardio. I'm lifting weights. And like, yeah, some like once a week, I will add on 30 or 20 mile cycle, like a bike ride or whatever, or 50 floors on the stair climb or something like that. But mainly when someone's like, got to be hitting the gym, I'm like, yeah, I need to go weightlifting, which is what I do at least four times a week, unless I'm vomiting because of this little fetus inside of me. If she would have said, hey, we're going to go on a 15 hour hike. You need to get into the gym. You need to, you need to prepare for that. You need to prepare your body for that. Okay, so I'm going to go to the gym, get on the treadmill and, you know, go at an incline for an hour or whatever. Or, okay, I'm going to, you know, do cardio and like work on my endurance. And so I'm going to be on the stair climber. That's like, that's how you would prepare for that, right? I mean, I feel like anyone, duh. But when you're not being specific and not setting people up for success because she says that she did. No, you didn't. But then you like can't get mad at them. Like, it's your fault. Like, this is the trend of this. It's like, you're getting mad at them because you didn't prepare them, but you're saying that they should have asked more questions, but it's like, they've been conditioned for years to just blindly follow you. It was really smart. And she went up to Sasha. She said, hey, so I, she literally, she's so smart for this. She goes, I'm on my period. How many tampons do I need to bring? I don't even know if she was on a period. How many tampons should I bring if I'm going to change my tampon every two hours? And so she goes, would five be enough? And Sasha was like, no, you might want to double that. So like it was, that was like very intelligent. This was like very, very intelligent stuff for her to ask that because then she knew, oh shit, we're spending the night somewhere. So she prepared like crazy. She was, that was Jamie Lynn did that by the way. So she was the most prepared, right? So really, really intelligent. because She started doing like the math. Now the crazy thing is Kelsey Ray overheard that and still didn't prepare. Okay. So we start and literally we had already talked to, I'll talk about making this baby shower in a second. We literally had already spoken to our guides because we put the whole thing together with these guides. Isn't it crazy that she said at the beginning of this, that she wasn't going to name names. And then she, she basically, she's called out someone on her downline and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that these 16 people, that's for Chelsea. These 16 people are like her direct, like her direct downline. And then because she says later, like 16 lines of business, no offense to the men out there. Love y'all. However, men don't understand vaginas as much as you would think. When one of the first female astronauts went up into space and she was on, she was, I guess, like going to be on her period or something. So she she was going to have one, one cycle while she was up there. Do you know how many tampons NASA gave her? They gave her 200 and they're like, is that enough? <laughs> what? Do you think we lose all of our blood? <laughs> What's happened? I mean, sometimes it feels like it, but so yeah, like it, not to like justify, I mean, that girl, you know, hearing it and then like not kind of catching on context clues. Okay. But like, she could have thought just like, oh, that like, that's a guy saying like, oh no, you're going to need 20 tampons for a day. That's a lot of tampons. Like what? They're with these guys. Um, and we said, if anybody asks throughout the entire day, how much longer, you know, like someone who wants to be able to control everything you are, we told them, I said that we said, you have to say, we're almost there. So even if they ask 20 minutes in how much longer we're almost there, we're almost there, we're almost there, we're almost there. Okay. Now here's where people got stupid. So we <laughs> dropped people off. Like gummy bear tastes exactly like if you take the bag of gummy bears, you dump it out and you lick the inside of the bag. So it's kind of like a blend of all of them. It's one of my favorite flavors of all time. Okay, so, <laughs> so we planned it to be like this because the whole thing was I wanted to break people, but like not destroy them. Just like, I wanted to see where their mindset is because in business you get really uncomfortable and most people quit. All right. And I want it. And in, in business and in leadership, people quit on you. And then people do this blaming thing all the time, like losers blame people. And I wanted to find out where my losers are. I want to find out who my winners are. I want to see who you're literally blaming them when you gave like bad, <laughs> you, you gave bad instructions. One thing that I heard her saying that I can't, I cannot stand that I'm like getting from this entire thing. And then also what you'll hear her say from her like response to Aaron B's Julie Joe and DC and like other people reacting to this. There's a good minute, a good bit of fat phobia in that too. So just be, be aware. Even though she says it's not, then don't call people couch potatoes. One thing that she, that like you'll get through this entire thing is that she's saying 
basically, and in my opinion, out of her own mouth, if you can't do this hike, and if you don't work out, then you won't be successful. Now, while I do think that everyone who is, you know, able-bodied enough to work out, great workouts that you can find if you're not able-bodied. Erica Manas has a good bit of like workout stuff on her channel. I'll link that down below. Steffi also has some stuff on her Instagram and I'll link that down below too. I love her so much. She definitely a person that's like breaking down stigmas and just the best and I love her. Again, like I was saying, I think if you are able-bodied, yeah, you should work out, babe. Go lift weights. It makes you feel great. Go to the gym. I don't want to be that type of person, but do it or work out at your house. You know, endorphins make you happy. Happy people don't kill their husband. Okay. I just cannot stand this idea that she puts in her people's head. And it, and it's literally in my mind, just so she can hold that over them, because realistically, she probably is like the most fit person of that group. And I really do think it's just something to like dangle over them and be like, well, I'm better than you. Like I make more money than you. I'm the leader. I'm like the healthiest person here. I'm the strongest person here. It's just, it's gross. I want to see who people are with super strong mindsets. I wanted to find out, I wanted to get really clear on who I am rocking with in this business. Okay. Also, I know I keep stopping it. I'm not sorry. I have so much to say. Breaking people down thing, you know, going off of no sleep, putting them in uncomfortable situations like that, the exhaustion, the like mental wear them down aspect is a cult tactic. Absolutely. I wanted to get like my very first initial reaction on camera with y'all, but I'm pretty sure that Dr. Steven Hassan is gonna go over that in the clip that I show y'all. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God his assistant sent over that clip to me because I could not find it. Thank God to everyone who has, <laughs> who has sent me like this clip and then like another one like, oh, the, com the community of content creators that are just, it's amazing. Again, I will have everyone who has made videos about this and like articles and all that and just everything and like really good resources for you. I'll have that all linked down below. So we planned to make them walk five kilometers in direct sunlight on the side of a Colombian road. And so the van stops after a 40 minute drive into the middle of nowhere. And the van, by the way, I forgot to mention this, the van had just enough seats for, uh, for 16 people. So people were crammed in there like sardines. And I said, I suggest you don't talk. I suggest you use this time to sleep and stay cool. When they should have listened. They should, they were dumb. Not everyone was dumb, but not everybody was sleeping. And certainly people were talking, which makes them hotter and they were not resting. They didn't listen to you because they thought that they were going on a two hour hike because that's what you told them. Also, just in case you don't know, a 5K, 3.1 miles. 5k like directly in the sun yeah that would that would kind of suck but also when you think about like 3.1 miles so for instance i've done that in the direct sun i understand like columbia is closer to the equator so yeah it's gonna be hot duh that's literally how the earth works so like i and carrying extra like extra weight like your pack or whatever like i get that where it's hotter like yeah that would suck and like uncomfortable already I get it, but what I don't understand is why is she saying that she's planning for them to do a five kilometer walk or hike? She's saying that it's gonna take 15 hours, a 15 hour hike. How slow are y'all walking? It doesn't take me that long to do that. I don't, I, I really cannot wrap my head around this. Why would it take you 15-ish, 11, 10, even three, even three hours. Like, even if you're walking pretty slow, you can walk a mile in like 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Like the math and all the figures and numbers and shit that's in this, that she like spouts off in this video make no sense. And we'll get more into that later because it makes no sense at all. Dumb, we need to listen to instructions. When the leader speaks, listen. Okay, so I was trying to give them hints all along the way. You know, conserve your water. I was trying to tell them, like, if you feel like you're prone to bugs, you know, be ready for this. Okay, so <laughs> some of you are like, I'm out. Like, never mind. Don't want to join her team. Listen, listen, listen. All right. <laughs> so uh, she's dropping all these little blurbs here and there, implying, in my opinion, that she was annoyed with them for not being prepared and talking to each other, but again, she lied to them. So you're mad at them for not being prepared for something that you specifically lied to them about and never told them about. That's gaslighting, absolutely crazy. And then she said, when a leader speaks, you listen, but also read between the lines because they're gonna purposely mislead you. Like Jesse Lee, what are you talking about? So we drop off and we get out and we're literally in the side of a road in sticker bushes. 
And immediately there's some people like, ah, that was, ah, ah. And I'm like, put your hiking boots on, man. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Courtney was all excited. She's like, should I put the pants on now? Should I put the pants on later? I'm like, I don't know. If you want to put pants on now, you can. I'm not putting pants on right now. I think it's gonna. I think it's a little hot right now. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. We're about to be at the hottest part of the day. Okay, what are in the cans? This is this is keto up. This is instant ketosis. So fat loss, muscle preservation, sleep, skin, mood, focus, energy, and digestion. Okay, so. So Courtney was like, yeah, what, what about, oh, I got some extra this, some extra stickers. Like she's putting all this, because she had, she was bug spraying. She was prepared with that. I'll give her that. I was like, I wouldn't put pants on if I were you. Okay. Uh, but anyway, she was really excited though. And so we're on the side of the road and I literally mean the side of a road. Okay. So cars are zoom, zoom, zoom right here. I'm like, get in line, get in line. So you got people who are scared of heat. They're scared of exercise. They're scared of they're going to dehydrate. They're scared of motorways. They're scared of all this, okay? Okay, so before she said they're in the middle of nowhere, if you're in the middle of nowhere, you're not going to have cars zooming by you. Also, people who are scared of cars, who's scared of a car? I mean, I understand like people who are get, you know, nervous when you're walking on the side of a very busy highway. Yeah, that's a that's understandable. You don't. So you mean people who are scared of getting hit by a car because they didn't know you were going to like this specific area. Duh. And then people who are scared of heat, people who are scared of working out. Jesse Lee, how are this any of the 16 people below you scared of working out when y'all are in a health and wellness MLM that is all about fat loss, muscle preservation, and like looking your best, basically. That doesn't make sense. Her storytelling is absolute garbage. But according to her pictures, they were in the Playa Blanca Island, about an hour and a half boat ride or two hour by car. I've been there many times. There is a jungle that you can hike in and that's close to the beach, but the deeper you go, the harder it gets. Just as a reference, usually climate in this region is 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, that's the same in Tampa. Super humid, sometimes even hotter, of course, because the humidity. Mosquitoes are gigantic. So a 15 hour hike must have felt like hell. I mean, a 15 mile walk anywhere would probably feel like hell. Just wanted to give you that reference in case you need it for your video. Thank you for all you do. And I said, wow, thanks for the insight. So she might've been in that area. She said that they did like change locations in like the middle of it. They took like a boat to go somewhere. But this girl also mentioned another place too like further up in the message. And she said the same thing about that one too. Side the road and I'm just like, get it going. You know, like I knew how far we were going in the direct sunlight. Not that it mattered, but I was like, here we go. Now we had, I, I now look, I did actually over prepare. All right. I thought I had to have enough water for 18 hours. So I brought five liters of water because if you don't know about me, I'm a freaking camel. I knew how far we had to go. I over prepared, but that's beside the point. No, Jesse Lee, that is the point you you can't act like oh i'm i'm so much better i was prepared because you had all the information they didn't they didn't have that information at all because you deliberately lied to them you deliberately did not set them up for success and then you got mad at them and disappointed in them and disgusted with them as you'll see because they weren't prepared but how can they be prepared when you lie to them it's like such a great like look, just a peek into the toxic and I don't even want to say borderline abusive because that is abusive behavior and manipulative behavior. Like, doesn't it just remind you of an ex-boyfriend or ex-spouse, whoever, where like they lie to you and then they get mad at you because of the result of their lies? And it's like, what? My book bag was really heavy, which I was like, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. But I was like, let's go. Like, I'm not going to dehydrate because you don't want to see me dehydrated. All right. So I'm just going. Sasha and I are chatting, chatting, chatting. 15 minutes into this freaking hike, walk, excuse me, not hike, walk. Three people are like, I got to pee. One of which is Courtney. Now, Courtney's like in such an excited mood that she like runs into the woods. Like I can <laughs> Walking. And then she runs out, right? She runs out after two people who like moseyed into the woods, okay? And I'm like, oh, they should not be moseying anywhere because we have a really, really long way to go, okay? But they're in the woods. And I don't know, man, they were like, you know, a long time. I'm like, this is bad. This is bad for momentum. I literally know that we have at least 15 hours left of this, but whatever. Because when you, and like for me also, one of the little keys, because I do all these crazy hikes and you know, go to the Middle East and I'll hike through the desert and whatever. Like when you have to pee and you know it's going to be really hot, don't pee. Like let your body 
like sweat out the the water just fyi okay so i'm literally, literally on the side of the road <laughs> all these cars are like going by <laughs> like <laughs> whatever and then it's hot like i'm not gonna lie you're on asphalt we got a lot to talk about holy urinary tract infection good god now i'm not trying to one-up jesse lee ward but I'll have Ethan insert some pictures. Now that my audience is bigger, you might not know this. For six months straight, I lived in the wilderness. Sometimes it was on the side of a mountain and like foresty type of foliage. And then for a part of it, it was more like red rocks, which is my favorite. I love that. In St. George, Utah, in Southern Utah, two and a half hours outside of Las Vegas. It's usually where you fly into. I went to a wilderness program called Second Nature Entrada. It saved my life. I would not be alive right now. I understand that there are bad types of experiences. And yes, there are many residential treatment facilities and therapeutic wilderness programs that are not run well and they should absolutely be shut down and they're disgusting. Thank the Lord I went to two of the best therapeutic in treatment places and I'm alive and I'm super thankful for that and I am now a successful and thriving human because of it. Just in case anyone's like, oh my God, I th what about Paris Hilton? Calm down. <laughs> she actually went to one of the same places as me, but then ran away. And it's like, girl, what, what are you doing? Like your parents sent you there for a reason. We didn't have any cabins. It was tarp and cable or tarp and rope. We had like 40 to 80 pound packs on our back. Keep in mind, I'm 15 years old, anorexic. <laughs> I got a lot of muscle from that though. And they were obviously like overfeeding me so I would not die in the cold. So I would say I'm pretty experienced with hikes. <laughs> and since then I've done lots, like, you know, lots of hikes and stuff. I don't know what the f she's talking about by letting your body sweat out the water. Jesse Lee, do you think that if you drink water and like actually stay hydrated, which you should on hikes and stuff like that, if you just think about it, your body will sweat out the water or that like, water from your bladder will just sweat out. What's, what is happening? What's going on? <laughs> Who is following this woman? Cause that's not how that works. And yeah, like try to hold it, I guess. So you can like space out your peas, but also don't do that. Just push it out, keep going, push it out, keep going. Cause it's gonna get more uncomfortable the more you hike with a full bladder and it's gonna make you miserable. Sincerely, someone who not only has to pee every five minutes now, but also someone who still ricks out time and who lived in the woods for six months straight <laughs> all these cars are like going by <laughs> like <laughs> whatever and then it's hot like i'm not gonna lie you're on asphalt it's the dead heat of the equator we're in cartagena okay and we're just going 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 and then first person goes like <gasps> and i'm like are you freaking kidding me it was 25 minutes into this walk and somebody literally is done and i look at sasha I'm like, are you kidding me? I told them for the last 90 days to go to the gym. Like literally, I, and so I'm mad. I'm checking my emotional intelligence because I'm like, are you kidding me? We've done nothing. We've literally walked on a straight road. And this person starts blaming. She's like, I, well, we're on a hill. I'm like, I see hills nowhere. We're in Colombia. You know what I mean? Like, what is going on? And then I start getting mad. I'm like, what? And then this person starts to mention, well, I have diabetes. I got to check my blood sugar. And Sasha and I look at each other like, nobody mentioned diabetes. <laughs> like, we might actually kill people on this trip. Like, we literally thought that I was like, oh, my God. He's like, do you have your blood sugar monitor? I don't know why I'm still walking because we were definitely not walking, which was pissing me off. What a fun thing to joke about. What a fun thing to joke about. Killing people. Woo! How well do you know these people on your team that you don't know that they have diabetes? Like what? Irresponsible on her part. She says, how do you know they didn't sign waivers? And it's like, well, obviously we don't because you didn't say that. But also you still lied to them and misled them. So that wouldn't matter. Like on there, you would have to put like specifically what type of activities you're doing. And then they could come back and, and sue you, which they probably won't because they're all brainwashed by you. But they could come back and say like, okay, well, she lied to us. And then that contract or whatever form or waiver would be completely invalid. Anyway, so she takes out the blood sugar thing. Her blood sugar is at 243. And I'm like, are you serious right now? How is your blood sugar at 243 if you're diabetic? You know, I'm like, I don't even understand this. Sasha, I don't even know what that means, by the way. I don't know anything really about diabetes. Sasha's like, how is this your sugar? Like, what are you eating? She goes, well, I got off the, I got off the bus and I had a candy bar because I was tired. 
And Sasha's like, are you fucking kidding me? He's German, by the way. He's like, you're diabetic. Like, why? Why did you have a candy bar? You know? And she's like, I don't know. And he's like, and I'm like, contraband. She said 243. And according to Leahy.org, I just I Googled it. And then also the Mayo Clinic. Obviously, it, it depends on what type of diabetes you have. I mean, there's type 2, type 1. Hypoglycemia, that you have too much blood glucose. A glucose means sugar. That happens when you're blood level is around 200 or higher hypoglycemia can happen if you miss taking your diabetes medication eat too much or do not get enough exercise you know people on her team not being prepared for what you didn't tell them they were gonna be doing completely their fault right contraband contraband so then so, so then one of our little tour guides takes her book bag, right? And I'm like, taking your book bag, this is for the week, right? And I start trying to coach her through it. I'm like, one step in front of the other, all right? And I'm like, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it wasn't even that fast. But I'm like, get it going, get it going, girl, get it going. So, whoa, so then I'm like looking up ahead and I see that there's a commotion. All right, there's, and then our, one of our Colombian tour guides in his flip flops, mind you, starts in, in flops, literally in flops. He's running and I'm like, oh my God, somebody else is down for the count. What is going on? This is, this is, you gotta be kidding me. It's been 45 minutes at this time, 45 minutes. And I know this is a 15 hour situation, guys. 15 hours, we're just getting started. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was getting a little spicy. All right, so I'm like, what is going on? Like, how, what, <laughs> what is happening right now? And I look up ahead, you know, this is, this is, I don't have binoculars, but I'm pretending, okay? So I look up ahead like this, and I see someone on the ground, like literally on the ground. I'm like, no way. Like, this is actually impossible. Somebody's on the ground, and they're like, I'm overheating. It's so hot. I can't walk this long. I'm like looking at Sasha, looking at Mateo, looking at Sasha, looking at Mateo. Mateo's like, I can tell the little Colombian man is talking and well, he's speaking in Spanish to Mateo. Like, like, why are these, why are these gringos falling over? Like, I want to know. What's First of all, as a gringa myself, because you know, yo soy as muy gringa. Why are they falling over, Jesse? It's because you lied to them and you didn't tell them specifically, hey, we're going to go on a 15 mile all day hike adventure swim type thing so you need to get your endurance up and you basically need to like train for that but you lied to them and you specifically and purposely omitted it in my opinion so that i mean that that's she said it herself so if we're taking what she says is truth which yes she's an unreliable narrator but let's say that what she's saying is fact okay she specifically omitted not all facts but specific facts to them so that in my opinion, they wouldn't be prepared enough so that then she could put them in a situation where they would be being broken down so that, in my opinion, they would kind of realize or be put in a situation where she could say, you're not good enough. You're, you know, failing in your business because of this, which like, Jesse Lee, they're, if they're this 16 below you, clearly they're not failing like they have to be doing some type of okay if they're the 16 like right below you right if they're below the number one network marketer in the world she said this the other day the number one rising female entrepreneur pretty sure oprah the lady who created and owned spanx kendra scott which that's going kind of downhill but if i looked up any female entrepreneurs or rising female entrepreneurs you're not on that list, girl. Like, I want to know what's going on. Like, why are these gringos? Like, this is two gringos in a row. Okay, like you could tell he was just like, I'm very confused. Like, wh what are we doing here? Because they knew how long it was going to be too. And you could tell that the tour guides were like, this ain't going to be good. And that's why I pulled Sasha and Taylor. So I'm like, what are we going to do? Like, do we call, like, is there a 911 for Columbia? Like this person's on the ground, says they're like, like they're, we're checking their blood, their, uh, what is this, their pulse, everything. This person's not diabetic, thank God. I thought we were gonna have two diabetics. I'm like, oh God, nobody told us anything, right? So anyway, long story short, we had to call an emergency motorcycle 45 minutes into the walk, okay, on the side of the road. I'm like, there's no way, man, no freaking way. So anyway, the rest of the group keeps going ahead. We push ahead and we walk the entire direct sunlight 
like, I don't know how hot it was, whatever. I don't really care. It's just heat. Okay. It's all on your head. We get to the bird aviary area. Okay. And maybe some people are scared of birds. I don't really know, but we get to the bird place and there are birds everywhere, like peacocks and flamingos and all kinds of stuff. It was actually really cool. Um, but we're inside this thing. We were supposed to have two and a half hours. We start realizing we spent an hour on the side of the, we were at least an hour behind. We're like, this is really bad. Like, this is actually really bad. And no, it was not really that hot. It's just, it was just sunlight. And we all had hats on, so I don't know, but neither here nor there. So we get to the bird place. Bird place is really cool. And then we have to keep walking, okay? So we got to keep going. So this is probably five, six hours in or something like that at this point. And then uh, we, so we're walking, you know, we're chatting. We're walking and we're chatting. We're walking and we're chatting with everybody. And then they think we go to a beach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did go to a beach. All right. Uh, so we went to a beach and they were like, oh, is this where we put the bathing suits on? Is this where we put the bathing suits on? And I'm like, actually, Courtney said that. Are we going swimming? This is Courtney. Are we going swimming? <laughs> I'm like, Courtney, no, I wouldn't put your bathing suit on right now. Oh, Courtney's watching. So perfect. So she's like, is it, are we going to go to the beach? It's still very hot outside because it's probably, I don't know, five o'clock or something like that. And I'm like, I wouldn't yet, because the whole point was we were going to make them walk two miles, okay, on the beach. We're going two miles on the beach. Um, I don't see what the question was, but, oh, okay. So two miles on the beach, and then we were taking them rock climbing, all right? So these people are already, like, very stressed out. We're walking them on the beach. They're starting to, like, oh, maybe we're going to go to a private beach. So they're kind of excited again. Ooh, a private beach! And Mateo and I are just laughing at each other. Sasha's just laughing. Rendy's over here. Rendy, I can tell, can't believe she's exercising. We get to this rock wall, and I, I mean, you could tell that there was some panic in the air. Well, that was rude. Who's Brandy, and why does she hate her? Brandy can't believe she's exercising. Like, Jesse Lee, we get it. You're skinny. You're skinny, and you work out. It doesn't make you better than anyone. Pardon for being really like spicy right now, guys, but she sucks, and that's so rude. I just, I cannot, I cannot stand that. She, so she said, again, the numbers in this don't match up. So she said that this was a 5K, which is 3.1 miles, right? I feel like we all know that. You've seen the 3.1 little sticker on the back of people's cars. You get it. Then she said, and then we walked two more miles, which would have been 5.1 miles, right? It, so either way, if it was 3.1 miles or five miles, in a second, she's going to say it was, you know, 11 hours. Like we're at hour 11 now. Why did it take y'all? Even if you stopped for an hour, help people not die because you're responsible. And even if you stopped for an hour or two, let's say you stopped for three hours total, including like the bird sanctuary, which is fun. I love that for them. Cute. A little like adventure hike with like fun stops on the way. Sign me up. I would have loved this. I would have absolutely loved this day. Sounds cool. Not with her. That sounds awful. And if you're prepared, then it sounds like they probably would have enjoyed it so much more if they were prepared, like, why not do that? Because she wants to be in control. That's why. Because she's a cult leader. It doesn't make sense because she said 11 hours, like, let's subtract three hours from that. So we're at eight hours now. Still doesn't make sense. Why would it take you eight hours to walk at an okay pace, three miles or five miles? That makes no sense. What I'm using their pure therapy. Oh, I did take keto kit. Okay, so you're seeing Keto Kick right now, live in action, all right? So go ahead, buy your Keto Kick bundle. <laughs> all right, <laughs> like, why do I have this much energy? What happened? All right, so, uh, but at any rate, so then they had to get, like, on all fours. They had to actually climb up these walls. People are freaking out. Jamie Lynn is even like, I can't do this. I literally don't think I can do this. I can't do this. I don't think I can do this. And then she starts talking to herself positively. She's like, I can do this. I'm strong. I trust my body. And they're throwing themselves on the rocks and they're having much, like, not fun, but they were hiking up the rocks. And then because we were so far behind, we're supposed to be a point that was going to be pretty scary for everybody where uh, we, we did get to it, but then we couldn't go because the tide was too high. They were going to have to get totally soaking. They were kind of, kind of going to get thrown against the rocks at the same time that they hold on to the rocks and kind of like scale the rocks like I've done in Austria before, but not quite so extreme, but enough to scare the piss out of them, okay? So they went, so we were going to go then around and up and there was going to be a place to, to watch the sunset, but because the tide was so high, we weren't able to do that in Colombia, but that's okay. So we turned back around we head back down the rocks. People, again, are kind of like losing their minds a little bit. Like, oh my gosh, people are super scared. They're jumping over the rocks and stuff like that. You can tell they're a little scared. They're going to fall into the ocean as the waves just kept crashing and crashing and crashing. And then uh, we told them to stop. So then we're like, all right, we're going to go walk on the beach. So then we went another two more miles 
on the beach. So two, two full miles on the beach. And I could hear them saying like, oh, my calves. Oh, oh, my ankles are weak. Oh, and I'm like, keep it moving. And we're setting the pace. Some people started getting really scared. What's wrong? Huh? Oh, um, you could tell some people were like, oh, you're going in there, aren't you? Some people were like really scared. They were like, oh gosh, we sit down on the beach. The bugs start coming out. So I don't like sitting there, but that's, that's fine. We watched the sunrise, sunset together. It was super gorgeous in Colombia. And then we get back up again and we start walking again. Now here's where it got really interesting for me. They thought we were done. This is one of the first times they were like, okay, it's not a two hour hike. We're on like hour eight or 10, uh, but everything's okay. It's not too bad yet. Okay, so she now she's saying hour eight or 10 or subtract four because of like the attempt at rock climbing. Why would it take you five or seven, five or seven hours to walk three? It just doesn't make any sense. Like, am I, am I weird for getting, I mean, yes, the answer, no matter what I say next, the answer is yes. For getting like so hung up on that, her story does not make sense. And I don't know why I thought it would. Also, I had my lawyer go over it and we will read what she sent over to me after we're finished with this one. This is not what we were expecting, right? And you could tell that they thought we were done. We're not done. <laughs> We stop and we tell them, hey, we're going to eat here. So then they start bringing out raw meat and we build a fire. And on a grill, we grill chicken and beef and grilled pineapple. And there were potatoes and we ate off of literal leaves. And Rendy's actually had sand on it. So Rendy had some chicken tenders, basically, but that's okay. It fell into the sand. <laughs> and you and they were actually excited. By then they were kind of like, yeah, this is cool. Like I'm adaptable. I'm 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 good. Like I can do anything. You could tell that they were starting to shift into more powerful versions of themselves at this point. Uh, but then they definitely thought we were done. They shifted into more powerful versions of themselves. Or did you just wear them down that they were like, okay, I just have to go with the flow, I guess. Because she says that she paid for all of this because she invited all of them. Like it was a treat, I guess, or whatever for her downline. Like ev everything she said, if it was like me and Hubs and like a two friends or even just me and him, sounds fun. And I mean, I did something like that in Costa Rica. Like it's, I just cannot get it through my head that like she's getting mad at them for not being prepared even though she lied to them. <laughs> like, it's just so, it's such poor leadership. And then we said, surprise. Now this is right around, uh, around 11 PM. So you tell me in the, uh, she said my chicken was super crunchy. Tell me in the chat, in the comments, what color is the sky generally at 11 PM in the evening? Uh, unless you're in Scandinavia in the summer, which we're not right now. Okay, so take a gander, give me like a color, give me a color pattern that happens around, you know, midnight, 11 p.m. Like what color are we looking at? That's right, thank you. Thank you, Queen Sky. Black, dark, Jacqueline, black, 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 black. The sky's pitch black. Pitch black, no one's around us, complete seclusion. We're not like on the beach with people, guys. We took them to a completely secluded area all alone. There is nobody. You can't scream and get safety. We put them in complete seclusion from the world. Okay. No one's coming to help you. Nobody's coming to save you. Good luck. Okay. Um, which already would panic some of you. Right. And, uh, so then we get, I say, Hey guys, we're going to get in the boat. And you can see a lot of these people on their faces were like, why are we getting on a boat almost at midnight? And I'm like, come on, show days. Let's go on a boat. Okay, because I knew it was going to happen. So then we drive out on a boat for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We're now in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> and I know some of you have a fear of what? Of, you know, the ocean, of, of deep water. Thank you for your order, by the way. Appreciate you. Middle of the ocean, pitch black, nothing to see but stars, no lights anywhere. We're not near towns. We're not near people. We're not near villages. We're in the middle of the ocean, pitch freaking black. And the boat stop. <laughs> and I go, okay, jump off. And they're like, what? And I said, jump, jump into the ocean. 
at midnight, I said, jump into the ocean. So they have their life vests on. And you could see there, like some of them were like, nope, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It is cold. It is uh, it is pitch black. I do not jump into black water. I do not jump into deep water. I do not jump into the ocean, period. Uh, hell no. But I didn't just take them to deep water. I actually took them to uh, to plankton. Oh, oh nice. I saw that. You missing one? Yeah, we can park on them now. Well, there was one. Uh, no, oh. I already grabbed that one. So I literally took them to plankton. So if you don't know this, if you've ever seen SpongeBob SquarePants, hi, Kumba Chows. So uh, plankton glow as soon as you touch them. So they jumped off of the boat into- Character Plankton and SpongeBob does not glow when you touch him. How dare you disrespect him in the chum bucket like that? She said, when I say jump into the ocean, you jump into the ocean. What in the cult leader? Some Plankton can glow in the dark. The word for this is bioluminescence. I'm smart, which comes from bio meaning life and lumen meaning light. You know, luminous, like from Harry Potter. Most of these plankton glow blue, but a few can glow green, red, or orange. Bioluminescent plankton don't glow all the time. It's not all plankton. Yeah, you're dumb because you don't know about bioluminescent plankton. <laughs> Do you know what time sharks eat? I mean, all the time, but nighttime. Like suns, like dawn, dusk, and nighttime is usually when like sharks are eating the most. Jesse Lee, are you trying to kill these people? Plankton and everywhere they move, you see green glowing all over the place. It was, lucky. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. It, you can't even capture it on camera. You can probably Google it and try and check it out. It'll do it no justice. It glows everywhere. And we were laughing so hard. We're screaming. Everybody got off. Everybody ended up jumping in. Everybody was scream laughing, crying, having so much fun. We're looking up at the stars. It's like the crystal clear sky because there's no light pollution and it wasn't a full moon or anything. We were completely joyful. Everyone's like, oh my God. And then Brittany Anderson started talking about uh, under the sea at the Krabby Patty and whatever. We were laughing so hard. Um, we get back in the boats. We head back and we debrief. So they started talking about how grateful they were for, you know, for the warm water, how grateful they were for, you know, the hard day where their bodies hurt and they thought they were going to give up. So grateful that they kept pushing and, you know, for fresh water to drink and for all this stuff, right, for the food that we ate. And, um, and so they started having a lot of gratitude towards this stuff and they really thought we were done. As a matter of fact, Courtney was like, I really thought for a minute there that we were going to spend the night here because we really made it seem, you know, like, oh, shoot, this is. I need to get the, other, the Instagram one to shut off. It's been an hour. Um, I have to figure that out again. But anyway, uh, we weren't done though, okay? And after we went through the debrief, which was really awesome, and I, and I actually hammered these people about, like, I didn't, I mean, I, I did mean to be like this. I told them about the disappointment for their physical health, the disappointment for how much they have not been taking care of their bodies, the disappointment for clearly not eating well and taking care of themselves. Um, I really told them, like, I didn't keep anything from them uh, um, about that. Um, thank you for following, by the way. I didn't keep anything from them other than the length of the hike and how much they should have prepared and all of the information for that day, but go off. Perfect. Okay. So anyway, so uh, sorry, having Instagram uh, issues, my Instagram being crazy. Um, so anyway, I, uh, so then as soon as we're done the debrief and I kind of like get on all these people and we have a leadership lesson, I'm coaching them a little bit, really powerful stuff. Sasha, funny Sasha goes, yeah, and uh, now we're going to take you guys to your hotel. We're going to take you where you guys are going to stay tonight. The hotel you'll be staying at is called The Million Stars, a.k.a. I made them sleep, whether they were prepared or not, on the beach in Colombia, in Cartagena. Um, two of our guides had to stay up all night long because it's apparently actually extremely dangerous. You could be uh, kidnapped or whatever. It didn't happen. No problem. We didn't feel endangered. It was flipping amazing. Um, and I will tell you, you start having gratitude for everything. Uh, Kelsey Ray was really pissed off. Uh, she, I could see it on, Rox was really mad. Rox from Mexico was super mad. They weren't prepared, right? They didn't, we told them, you know, have warm weather clothes. They thought we were kidding. So um, Kelsey had to sleep just in her bathing suit bottoms, which is not awesome when it's like, you know, 70 degrees outside and you're on the ocean. I slept like a freaking angel. Um, it was amazing. So, uh, and then the next morning we wake up, we have fresh fruit, we get on the boat, we walk back, no shoes allowed. Uh, we walk through the city of Cartagena, no shoes. 
and we get back to the house and I had massage therapists waiting for all 16 people. I paid for full body massages for an hour and 15 minutes for every single person. Um, and literally their whole lives are changed. So for the better. Because you were prepared. Again, even, even with the stuff that she said, cause she was like, yeah, maybe bring warm clothes. You know, you might get cold at one point. Or she also said like bring enough water for a day, not for a day and night, not for 24 hours. And again, like you're not only putting them in danger with the like circumstances that you're put, you know, putting them in because, you know, one of them had diabetes or health issues or whatever, but then also putting them in danger in like a dangerous like area, having them sleep on the beach. Like were, th- were those guides armed? I would hope so. And it doesn't really, s- I don't know. I, I would, I don't know. So might've been, might not have been. So like their whole lives were changed. It was so great. Their lives were changed because like I lied to them they were exhausted and then I rewarded them and like I paid for no one cares if you paid for a masseuse or a team of masseurs masseuses to be there how are you going to want to be praised or bragging about what you did to solve a problem or to like alleviate something or relieve something when like you did the bad thing but also more so than that she said that she made them hike back to the villa from the beach so they hiked what five miles back barefoot on the hot asphalt like why like what was the point of all of this like this could have been like a cool team building like pushing yourself type of experience and you didn't have to lie about all of it but that's what makes it like super super culty literally doesn't make sense also how like poorly did she treat the person that had to be taken back to the villa on the bike i bet she treated her just like absolute poop So the pictures, the video, everything, like it does it no justice. Uh, My whole lesson in all of that to them and to you as well, if you're listening to this and watching this is you guys, if you're wondering why your life keeps sucking, you're not putting yourself in positions to grow. Okay. You're literally not, you're not putting yourself in positions to grow. You have to force yourself to have pain in order to grow. Physical pain is how muscles grow. Mental pain is how your mind grows. Emotional pain is how you grow emotionally intelligent all this stuff. So um, yes, am I actually, I'm, I'm very successful. Facts are facts. Okay. All right. So her lesson is force yourself to go through pain because pain is how you grow. So people who haven't like experienced any like trauma don't grow. You don't have to put your muscles through like pain. Like you're, sh- you're stretching your muscle, you're flexing your muscle. That's how you're growing your muscles. Working out doesn't always have to hurt. Like sometimes that, you know, you like little, little shakes, feel the burn a little bit, but it's not like pain. You can grow without hurting yourself or putting yourself through that emotional pain. But again, this sounds like something, we're done listening to her, by the way, thank God. But this sounds like something that an abusive partner would say. It's it's just not healthy. And she's, and, oh, it's, it's so cringe that there are so many people that went on that trip that are like, oh my God, this changed my life. Did it? Did it really change your life? Or are you just more brainwashed like into her service? Because that's what it sounds like. It sounds like you're just more loyal to her because of the like abusive tactics that she's using on you. Good Lord. Okay, we are going to listen to Dr. Stephen Hassan's point of view on it now. Okay, it's only 44 seconds, but let's listen to what he has to say. And then we are going to have to do a part two of this video. (laughs) Boy, what a bully and persona is just like a cult leader just shaming and blaming and guilt tripping and lying and withholding vital information and just totally elitist. It's kind of disgusting. Um, And if she makes millions of dollars through these kinds of techniques, I'm sure there's a lot of very upset, disgruntled people. And uh, regarding the person who needed to uh, get emergency help on her trip, um, talking to a lawyer might be a good idea. Thank you, Dr. Stephen Hassan, the leading cult expert in the U.S. If he is saying that you are exhibiting cult leader behavior, you might be a cult leader. <laughs> like, ugh. oh, Lord. God, isn't he just the best? I love him so much. He's great. He does amazing work. Really just the the best, honestly. Whenever anyone is like, I really need help getting this person out of this or that or blah, blah. blah. Um, Even if you're in like Jehovah's Witness as well, if you're, you know, feel trapped in Mormonism or whatever, please, please go to that website. It is so, so, so helpful. And we're going to do part two because there's a lot more to go, to go over and that will be her response. And I'll probably post that the day after I post this one. And you know what? I'll make that one the sponsored one instead of this one so that 
I can get this one up faster for y'all. All right, y'all. I appreciate you so much. This was pretty crazy, but it gets worse. I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, weekend, whenever you're watching this. Don't let someone treat you like this. This is not normal. Think about it. She's, she's their boss, essentially. She's their upline. She's their mentor. A mentor? The, the leader in your job should not be acting like this. It's very, elitist is a great way to put it. Also, I just looked down at my notes. The last note that I have, which was from an hour and 10 minutes into her video, she called herself the number one rising female entrepreneur in the world. And I have a little arrow that says, what a delusional weirdo. <laughs> I hope you have a great rest of your week, weekend whatever. Please do subscribe. I would appreciate it so much. Truly wild. I know there, there's a very slim chance, but anyone who was on that trip, anyone who has been under her or is still under her and like looks up to her, it's not okay for you to be treated like this. It's not at all. You deserve so much better. You can grow as a person. You can have a life-changing experience. Know your worth without being treated like this without being torn down. She specifically said that she wanted to like destroy people and break them down. That's why she lied to them. That's why she purposely withheld information. That is cult leader tactics. I will have down below the, the bite model, all those resources from Dr. Stephen Hassan's website, but then also characteristics of a cult leader. Again, I go over all of that extensively in my deep dive video of her. I'll have that link down below. And then also it'll be in one of the little like I little like I icon thing, little cards that pop out. So if you click on that, you'll see, you know, my interview with Stephen Hassan and then this video too. And I'll put the live stream of Julie Joe and Aaron B's reacting to that too. If you don't follow them, please do and DC. I'll see you in my next video. You're valid. You are valuable. Stick up for yourself. Being treated like that's ridiculous. Goodbye.